All right, um, I wanted to do like a little pre-lecture activity for the population fragmentation lab today. Um, so let's start off by defining a couple of terms, um, most of which you've had some exposure to during the evolution uh, unit of the quarter, um, but let's just refresh. Okay, so the first uh, uh, definition is a gene. As you know, a gene is just a stretch of DNA, a unit of DNA, that supplies instructions for how a particular polypeptide or protein is made. So let's say we've got a gene that determines spot color. Um, so there's one gene that codes for spot color in our lizards, and depending on which allele or version of the gene, that spot color is different. Right? So we could have a magenta spot color allele, or a green spot color allele, or a blue spot color allele. Right? All of them code for the spot color gene, but they're slightly different versions. So they're different alleles of the same gene. A genotype is the alleles that an individual has out of particular gene. Okay? So we're usually dealing with what are called diploid organisms, which means that they have a mom and a dad. So they have two entire full copies of a genome. So you, as a human, are diploid. Most of the organisms that you're used to interacting with, with the exception of bacteria, are also diploid. Um, so a diploid organism has two alleles for every gene. Okay? So you have two different alleles for your eye color gene, for example. Um, and today when we do the uh, population fragmentation simulation, we're going to be working with these fictitious lizard type organisms. And there's a gene that's, that determines spot color, and they're also diploid, so they actually have two alleles that determine spot color. So those two alleles is called a genotype, right? So just like you would have a genotype of eye color that would be brown brown or brown green or blue blue or blue green, right? These these draggles or these lizards will have two different alleles at their spot color gene. Okay, those two alleles make up their genotype. All right, <clears throat> uh, next group of terms are genetic drift and sampling error. So genetic drift is one of the forces that drives evolutionary change. Um, and it's the force that drives evolu uh, uh, allele frequency change or evolutionary change um, basically by random chance, right? So it's changes in allele frequency in a population due to what's called sampling error. Now, sampling error is error that arises from unrepresentativeness of the sample taken. So the example I always like to use is uh, if you grew up as a kid in the U.S., right, you're probably familiar with the, the custom of trick-or-treating on Halloween. So you go out and you uh, collect candy from strangers. That's what trick-or-treating is. And uh, again, if, if, you, if you grew up in the U.S., you're probably used to seeing these Starburst two-packs. Um, so you only get these two little candies, right? And sometimes you get two of the same flavor. And if you're really unlucky, you get two lemon-flavored ones, right? So presumably at the Starburst factory, they're making roughly equal frequencies of, lem of the yellow, red, pink, and orange flavors, okay? Um, so it should be about 25% of the flavor uh, of the candies are yellow, 25% are orange, 25% are pink, 25% are red. Okay, so if you think about these flavors as different alleles at the starburst gene, okay, you have four equally frequent alleles, each with a frequency of 0.25 to 25%. But when you look at your single serving package here, your two pack, um, it's literally impossible because the population is so small, there's only two individuals. It's literally impossible for all four alleles to be accounted for in equal frequency. Okay? Even if you had a four pack, it's very conceivable that all four would be the same flavor, or there would be one of the four flavors missing entirely, or there would be a flavor that would be overrepresented. Okay, it's very easy to, to think about sampling error in terms of these uh, flavor frequencies changing in a really small pack of starbursts. Okay, so that's what we mean by sampling error. It's error, right, deviation from expectation um, due to the unrepresentativeness of the sample taken. So as soon as you take a sample of something 
from our idealized 25%, 25%, 25%, 25% allele frequencies in the Starburst factory, as soon as we instantiate that with a sample, okay, that sample may not be reflective of the actual real allele frequency of those flavors in the factory, just by chance. Okay. So again, genetic drift is just change of allele frequencies due to that phenomenon of sampling errors. It's just change in allele frequencies essentially due to chance. Okay. All right, next section, uh, let's talk more about allele frequency. So uh, allele frequency is exactly what it sounds like. It's the frequency of a particular allele in a population, right? So how do we calculate that? Well, given the total number of individuals in the population, which is to say, given the, the total population size, um, we also need the number of individuals that, that fall into various genotypic classes. Okay? So we need to know how many individuals are you know, magenta magenta, how many are magenta blue, how many are green green, how many are green blue, etc. And once we get that information along with the total population size, we can calculate allele frequency. It's just the fraction of total alleles that are represented by our particular allele of interest. Okay, so if we want to know the allele frequency of the magenta allele in our draggle lizard population, it would be the number of magenta alleles, so the number of alleles of interest in our population, divided by the total number of alleles in our population. Okay. Um, so there's a really famous example with Gregor Mendel, who's the father of, of genetics, and he worked with pea plants, and the pea plants that he worked with had a lot of different traits, and there were two alleles at every single trait that he studied. So for example, flower color, there was purple flowers and white flowers. Um, pod shape, there was inflated and constricted. Pod color, there were yellow pods and green pods, etc., etc. Okay, So we could ask questions like, what is the frequency of the yellow pod allele in our population of pea plants? So now let's get some practice with uh, allele frequency calculation because you'll have to do that for the lab today. Okay, so first question is, there are 45 individuals who are homozygotes for the A1A1 genotype out of gene in a population. Okay, so this individual is a diploid. They have two A1 alleles. They got one from mom and one from dad. There are 55 so there are 45 of those individuals. There are 55 individuals who are homozygotes, right, which is to say they have two versions of the same allele. For the A2 allele, so they all have the A2, A2 genotype. And again, that's at the same gene, okay? So the question is, what's the frequency of the A2 allele in this population? All right, so go ahead and pause the video. Try to work this out for yourself. All right, welcome back. Okay, so the answer is 0.55. So how do we get that? So first of all, um, the question is, what's the allele frequency of the A2 allele? So frequencies are represented by numbers between zero and one, or you could use the, you could use percent. Okay, so between zero and 100%, or between zero and one, if you're just using a number, okay? So anytime you get numbers that are greater than one or less than zero, that don't have a percent at the end of them, those are not the correct answer. So A and B and G are right out. Okay. So remember, allele frequency is equal to the number of alleles of interest in a population divided by the total number of alleles in the population. Okay, so let's go with what are the, what's the total number of alleles in our population. Well, we've got 45 individuals who are this genotype and 55 individuals who are this genotype. So there are a total of 45 plus 55 individuals. 
So that gives us 100 individuals. Okay. Those individuals are diploid, okay, which means that the total number of alleles in our population is 100 times 2 because each individual has two alleles because they're diploid, right? So that's 200. So that's going to be our denominator in this equation here. So the question is asking, what's the frequency of the A2 allele? Okay, so let's look at our individuals. We've got 45 of our individuals who are A1, A1, okay? So they are not donating a single A2 allele to our Cali, okay? But then we have 55 individuals who are A2, A2. Each of them, because they're homozygotes, have two copies of the A2 allele that they're donating to our population tally, right? So it's 55 times 2, which equals 110. Okay, so our allele frequency of the A2 allele is equal to 110 divided by 200, which is equal to 0 0.55. Okay. All right, this will get easier. Next question. <clears throat> there are 10 individuals in a population. Three have the genotype A1A1, three have the genotype A2A2, four have the genotype A1A2. Okay, so now we have what's called a heterozygote, so an individual who has two different alleles, one from mom and one from dad, but they're not the same. And note that if there's an A2A1 individual, those get grouped into this genotypic class as well. So A1A2 is the same thing as A2A1. And the question is, what's the frequency of the A1 allele? And make sure to give your answer between 0 and 1, and I'm asking you to round to the nearest hundred. Okay. So, same, same problem as before, really. Okay, they're asking you to calculate allele frequency. I don't know why, just has a little accent. Allele frequency. Um, so, the allele frequency, first thing we want to know is, let's do the denominator first. It's always easier. So I'm telling you there are 10 individuals in the total population. Does that check out? We've got three individuals here, three individuals here, four individuals here. Three plus three plus four equals 10. So there's 10 individuals, okay, and they're all diploid. So 10 times two equals 20 total alleles. Question is, what's the frequency of the A1 allele? All right, so let's look at this first genotypic class, the A1A1 homozygotes. There are three of those individuals. Each of those individuals contributes not one, but two A1 alleles to our tally, okay, because they're homozygotes, they have two copies. So that's three times two, or six, A1 alleles from that genotypic category. Now we've got A2, A2 individuals, and they contribute zero A1 alleles. Okay, so we'll just say that's a zero. Then we've got four individuals who are A1, A2 heterozygotes. Okay, each of those four individuals is contributing one A1 allele to the tally. Okay, so that's three times two, which equals six, plus four times one, which equals four, so that equals 10. So the allele frequency is 10 over 20 or 0 0.5. Okay. So that's the answer is 0.5. Hopefully this is making more sense. Let's do one more. 20 individuals in a population, 18 of them have the B1, B2 genotype. Two have the B1, B1 genotype. What's the frequency of the B2 allele? Okay, so 
20 individuals, which means that the denominator is 20 times 2, which equals 40. And again, pause these if you want to figure them out by yourself. That'll probably be uh, more helpful for you. Okay, so that's the denominator. The question is asking the frequency of the B2 allele. So there's two individuals who are B1, B1. They're contributing no B2 alleles. And there's 18 individuals who are B2, B1, B2 heterozygotes. So they are each in, are contributing one B2 allele. So that's 18 is the numerator. 18 over 40 gives us. Zero point four five. Okay. All right, let's do one more. This time we've got seventeen individuals in a population. Ten have the A1A1 genotype, two have the A1A2 genotype, and two have the A1A3 genotype, and three have the A3A3 genotype. Okay, so now we have a scenario where there's not one allele not two alleles, but actually three different alleles or versions of this gene in the same population. Okay, so you can think about these as magenta, green, and blue if you wanted to. Okay, um, 17 total individuals, right? So, um, the uh, denominator in our equation is going to be 17 times 2 or 34, right? So that's the total number of alleles. Question is asking what's uh, the frequency of the A3 alleles? So let's tally the A3 alleles. Zero A3 alleles contributed by this genotypic class. Zero contributed by this genotypic class. Uh, one A3 allele contributed by individuals who are A1, A3 heterozygotes. And there's two individuals that do that. So two times one. Three individuals that have the A3, A3 genotype. Okay. So that's. 3 times how many alleles does each of these individuals donate? 2, A3, and then another A3. Okay, so that's 2 plus 6 equals 8. So the answer is 8 over 34, and what we want to round that to the nearest hundredth. So that gives us 0.235 something 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 rounded to the nearest hundredth gives us 0 0.24. Okay. All right, so that's calculating allele frequencies. The other thing that the lab is going to ask you to do is calculate expected genotype frequencies. Okay, so if you know allele frequencies, if there are certain assumptions met about the population, and those assumptions, you don't have to memorize this, right? But those assumptions are there's no mutation, no migration, no genetic drift, no natural selection, and there is random mating. Um, if those assumptions are met, then these would be the expected frequencies of homozygotes and heterozygotes at your gene, given those real frequencies in your population. Okay, so that's why we're, we're calling this expected genotype frequency. Because this is what, what this is what you would expect if those assumptions are met. Okay. So for homozygotes, the expected genotype frequency is really easy. It's just the allele frequency of your allele of interest squared. So the allele frequency of your allele of interest times the allele frequency of your allele of interest. So you could think about it like if there's um, sea urchins, for example, when they reproduce, they just dispel their gametes and let the, their gametes, their sperm and egg, just swim in the water column, meet each other, fertilize, form a new zygote, and you've got a new baby sea urchin. Okay? So um, this actually happens in real life, right? There is a time of year, it's usually during a full moon, I think, um, where all the sea urchins in, in some population will all just coordinate this uh, mating event. So just don't be scuba diving on that day and you'll be fine, right? But let's say, for example, we collect a bucket of water from that, that water column on the day everybody releases their sperm and egg cells, okay? 
the gametes are haploid, right? So when you make sperm and egg, it has only one full complement of the genome rather than the, the two full complements of all of your diploid cells in your body. Okay, so each of those sperm and egg cells are haploids. So they only have one allele at a gene. Okay, so if I'm making a brand new baby sea urchin and I am selecting a sperm cell at random from my bucket of water, okay, the probability that that sperm cell bears an allele, like the A1 allele, let's say, is equal to the frequency of the A1 allele in my population. That's what the allele frequency is telling me. It's basically telling me the probability if I draw a gamete in this population, a sperm or egg cell, uh, that probability that it's going to have this allele is that allele's frequency. Okay. So let's say I do that, and then I draw at random another, what did I draw, a sperm cell the first time? And I draw an egg cell, right, because I'm making a new baby sea urchin. The probability that that egg cell has an allele frequency, or an allele, uh, the A1 allele, is also the frequency of the A1 allele, okay? So the probability that my new baby has a genotype of A1A1 is the probability of having, having an A1 allele times the probability of having another A1 allele. So it's this event and this event, so these are independent statistical events if you've learned statistics in math class or anything like that. Right? Anytime you hear and like that, what's the probability of this and this happening? The and means multiplication. Okay. So to calculate the expected frequency of the homozygote, you just square the allele frequency of your allele as input. Okay. Heterozygotes, it's a little more complicated. Okay, it's two times the allele frequency of allele one times the allele frequency of the other allele. Okay, so what's the probability that my baby sea urchin is going to be A1, A2? Well, it's the probability that I draw a sperm cell that's A1 and a, an egg cell that's A2. Okay, that's one way I could be A1, A2. Sperm A1, egg A2. Okay, so that would be frequency of A1, A1 times frequency of A2. Or, what's the probability of me drawing an A2 sperm cell and then an A1 egg cell? Because that's another way you can be an A1, A2 heterozygote. Okay? So, anytime you hear or in statistics, what's the probability of this event or this event happening? What's the probability that I draw an ace of spades or a queen of hearts? You add those probabilities. So that would be 2 over 52 in the case of the card drawing. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so, probability of me drawing an A1 and then an A2, sperm and egg cell respectively, is the frequency of A1 times frequency of A2, or plus the frequency of drawing, uh, sorry, the probability of me drawing an A2 allele sperm and an A1 allele egg, which is A2 times A1. So now I've got an A2 times A1 plus an A1 times A2, and that equals 2 times A1 times A2. That's how we get our 2 times real frequency 1 times real frequency 2. Okay, if that was complicated, which it honestly shouldn't be, um, you can just memorize this. Let's ask some questions about that. Okay. Question says, the frequency of the A1 allele for a gene in the population is 0.34. There is only one other allele for the gene in the population. It's the A2 allele. Therefore, that A2 allele's frequency is 0.66. Okay, how do I know that? Because allele frequencies should sum to 1, right? Once you've accounted for the A1 allele and the A2 allele, and I told you there are no other alleles at that gene in the population, they together should, should account for 100% of the alleles at that gene. Okay, so if the A1 allele frequency is 0.34, the A2 allele frequency must therefore be 0.66 because 1 minus 0.34 is 0.66. Okay, so allele frequency should always sum to 1. Assuming that there's no evolution occurring, so no natural selection, no uh, random mating, all of that, uh, no genetic drift, no mutation, no mutation, etc. What's the frequency of the A1, A1 gene type in this population, rounded to the nearest hundredth? 
Okay. So, frequency of the A1 allele is 0.34. Pause this if you want to try to practice this. So, the frequency, the expected frequency of the A1A1 genotype is just 0.34 times 0.34, or 0.34 squared, okay, which equals... Point one one five six, which, if we're rounding to the nearest hundredth, is zero point one two. Next question: Frequency of the A one allele for a gene in a population is point two five. There's only one other allele for the gene in the population. It's the A two allele. Assuming that there is no uh, evolution occurring, so none of these things are happening. What's the expected frequency of the A1, A2 genotype in the population? Rounded to the nearest hundred. Pause it, try it out. It's a little more difficult this time. All right. So let's try it out. So the frequency of A1 is 0.25. Frequency of A2 is what? Well, there's only one other allele, so it's 1 minus 0.25. So 25% of the alleles have been accounted for already. And we know all the other alleles are A2, therefore they must account for 0.75, or 75% of the alleles. Okay, and the, the question is asking, what's the frequency of the A1, A2 genotype? So that is going to be equal to... 2 times A1 allele frequency times A2 allele frequency, which is 2 times 0.25 times 0.75. Okay, and that's going to be equal to 0.25 times 0.75 times 2, 0.375, which if we round to the nearest hundredth is 0.3. All right. Okay. One last part. Now we want to calculate the expected heterozygosity, right, at a gene in a population. So it looks like we've already done this, right, by calculating the frequency of the heterozygotes. That should be expected heterozygosity. But here's the thing. If you've got three alleles in your population, A1, A2, and A3, you can be a heterozygote by having an A1, A2 genotype, an A1, A3 genotype, or an A2, A3 genotype. All of those are different kinds of heterozygotes. So to calculate the total expected heterozygosity in a population, you actually have to make all three of those calculations. Okay? So you could do that. You're welcome to do that. So that would be 2 times allele frequency of A1 times allele frequency of A2 plus 2 times allele frequency of A1 times allele frequency of A3 plus 2 times allele frequency of A2 times allele frequency of A3. Okay? So that would be one way to do it. Um, there's a slightly easier way to do it when you get more than three alleles, which we won't do. It's beyond the scope of this course. Okay, um, And that is you just take the frequency of everyone who's not a homozygote by doing one minus the sum of the expected genotype frequencies of the homozygotes. So let's do an example of that. So let's say we've got the frequency of the A1 allele for a gene in the population is 0.34. There's only one other allele for the gene in the population, and that's uh, 0.66. What's the expected heterozygosity for this gene in this population? Okay, pause it. Try to figure this out. Welcome back. Okay, this one's really easy because there are only two alleles in our population. So the only possible way you can be a heterozygote in our population is by having the A1, A2 genotype. 
A2, A1 genotype is the same genotype. Okay? We already know the frequency for the expected heterozygosity here is equal to 2 times the frequency of A1, which is 0.34, times the frequency of A2, which is 0.66, which is equal to 4488, which if we're rounding to the nearest hundred to 0.45. Okay. The the way I just showed you how to calculate this is slightly different. It's one minus the sum of the expected genotype frequencies of the homozygote. Okay. So another way to do this is to do one minus the frequency of the A1 A1 homozygotes plus the frequency of the A2, A2 homozygotes. Well, we already know how to do this and this from this equation. Okay. So this is equal to 1 minus the sum of 0.34 times 0.34 and the frequency of the A2, A2 genotype, which is 0.66 times 0.66. Okay. All right, let's see if this checks out. 1 minus 0.5512 gives us 0.4488. Round it to the nearest hundredth, also gives us 0.45. Okay, so we actually have two ways of solving this problem. This way looks way more complicated, right? So using this equation seems more complicated, okay? And it is in the two allele case. In the two allele case, you could just easily do this. Right, but now let's do a three allele case. Okay, oh, let's do a three allele case later. Let's do another practice with the two allele case. Okay, frequency of the A1 allele for a gene in the population is 0.1, and there's only one other allele in the population, the A2 allele. Assuming there's no evolution going on, what's the expected heterozygosity for the genus population? Okay, pause it, try to do this calculation. Okay, so I'm only going to do it the second, well, I'll do it both ways. Okay, so the frequency of A1 is 0.1. Frequency of A2, therefore, is what? 0.9, because they have to sum to 1. Okay. So I could calculate the expected genotype frequency by doing 2 times 0.1 times 0.9, which would give me 0.18. Or I could do it like this, 1 minus frequency of the A1, A1 genotype plus the frequency of the A2, A2 genotype. Okay, so that would be 1 minus 0.1 times 0.1 plus 0.9 times 0.9, and that is equal to 0.9. Which equals 0.18. Okay. 
All right, so the reason I had us do this is because take a look at this, right? In both of these scenarios, you've got two alleles. If they're the same alleles, this is the same gene. So you can think about these as two different populations, one of which has an allele frequency of 0.34 and an allele frequency of 0.66. Okay, so these are both fairly common alleles, A1 and A2, in this population. In this population, the A1 allele is actually a little less common, right? Only 10% of the alleles in our population are A1, and the other 90% are A2. Okay, so this is a, a population where there's a lot bigger of a skew in the allele frequency, right? So most of the individuals are going to have at least one A2 allele in this population. Right? And in fact, the expected frequency of heterozygotes in this population is 18%. So only 18% of the individuals should be A1A2 heterozygotes in the second population, versus 45% of the individuals in our earlier problem uh, being heterozygotes. Okay? So this is the whole reason we're doing expected heterozygosity calculations in the first place, is because Heteros, expected heterozygosity is a way to measure genetic diversity in a population. So the higher the expected heterozygosity, the more genetic diversity your population has. Okay. Now with that said, let's do a three allele, uh, three allele case. Frequency of the A1 allele is 0.1. Frequency of the A2 allele is 0.2. There's a third allele, A3. I'm not telling its frequency. Okay. Assuming there's no evolution, what's the expected heterozygosity for this gene in this population rounded to the nearest hundred? Okay. So this is the most difficult kind of question that I would ever ask you to calculate in this class. Okay. Is to do a three allele expected heterozygosity. Okay. It's also the exact question you're going to get a lot of practice calculating today when you do your lab. So let's do it together. Go ahead and pause this, actually try to practice this, and come back. Okay, welcome back. Okay, we've got uh, the allele frequency of A1 is 0.1. The allele frequency of A2 is 0.2. What's the allele frequency of A3? Well, it's it's the remainder, so it's 1 minus 0.1 plus 0.2, okay, which is going to give us 0.7. So this plus this plus this have to sum to 1. Okay, so we know if 10% of the alleles are counted for by A1, 20% are accounted for by A2, the remaining 70% have to be accounted for by A3. So that's how we get our allele frequencies now Let's do our calculation of expected heterozygosity. Well, there's three different ways to be a heterozygote in our population. Okay, so we could do 2 times 0.1 times 0.2 here, right? Because it's 2 times the allele frequency of this times the allele frequency of this and then calculate the allele frequency of A1 and A3. So that's 0.2 times 0.1 times 0.7. And then the third type of heterozygote, the A2A2, would be 2 times 0.2 times 0.7. Okay. And then we would just sum those three together This is x, and this is y, and this is z. The expected heterozygosity would be x plus y plus z. Okay. But here's where this equation is actually handy now, right? The other way I can calculate expected heterozygosity is if I just take 1 minus the sum of the expected genotype frequencies of the homozygotes, right? Because if you're not a heterozygote, you're a homozygote. Okay, so I could also do this by 1 minus the sum of 0.1 squared 
plus 0.2 squared plus 0.7 squared. I personally think that this is an easier calculation to do. And as you get more and more alleles, this becomes increasingly easier as you as there are more and more ways to be a heterozygote. Okay. So this is going to equal Point four six. Okay, so forty six percent of our population should be heterozygotes if nothing weird is going on, if the population isn't evolving. Okay, so that's how you calculate expected heterozygosity. Okay, so now what you do is you walk through the lab. Um, There's a video that, that shows you how to do that, so I'll leave it to the tutorial video on the site to actually help you out with the rest. Okay. You'll be entering your data into this spreadsheet. So let's say you're Alyssa. Okay, so Alyssa is doing a population that has a total size of 10 individuals, okay, and she's starting with a frequency of 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and 0.34 for her blue, green, and magenta alleles respectively. Okay, so she's doing all those calculations um, as she walks through the various generations of the simulation. Once she has all of those allele frequencies, she'll then calculate the expected genotype frequencies of the blue-blue, green-green, and magenta-magenta homozygotes. Then she can use those three homozygote frequencies to calculate the expected heterozygosity, right? So it's one minus the sum of those three. Okay, she'll be entering those in that uh, column of the data. Some of you, let's see, like uh, Cody, are actually doing a fragmented population. So the total population size is 10, but there's actually two fragments. Okay? So Cody will be tracking fragment 1's allele frequency changes here, and fragment 2's allele frequency changes here. Okay? So just be on the lookout for your name in these little top rows, and that's that's how you'll be filling out these data. You have until Thursday to fill out your part of the data set. Um, and please let me know if you have any other questions. Thanks. Take care.